What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here with the review for Baddies ATL Season 1 Episode 4. The episode was titled Let's Get to the Bag. I don't know what bag they get into. This is week episode 4, week 4, and I keep saying the same thing. What's the premise of this show? I feel like when it comes to this show, I think that they just pitched like let's put the bad girls in the house and let's see how things go let's let's put past bad girls in the house and let's see how this shit go or Zeus saw that 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 shit show that was the only you know them talking about the only fans they're like oh shit we gotta hop on that like I, I don't I don't understand it but whatever so let's get before we get into the review if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel hit that subscribe button so you guys um, are no you know so you guys no, when I drop anything and hit that notification bell, that really clues you into when I drop anything. Um, what else? Yeah, that's it, you guys. We're gonna go ahead and get into this episode review without further ado. All right, you guys. So this episode, I don't know why they give us a playback of what happened in the last episode, which was literally absolutely nothing happened in the last episode, like nothing. <clears throat> but this one picks up where the last one left off. You guys remember? In the last one, Natalie and Christina were sitting down having a conversation. And you guys remember, Natalie was talking about the fact that Christina was being sarcastic. I'm going to ask Natalie, does she know what the definition of sarcast, sarcastic, well, sarcasm is? Because what Christina did was not sarcasm. Let me see if I can pull up the dictionary, the Webster's Dictionary version of what sarcasm means. Nah, I don't really care. But yeah. Natalie, <clears throat> what Christina was doing was not sarcasm, but okay. So you guys remember, in the last one they got up and they were about to fight each other. The producers came in, the security came in and broke it apart. So nobody was <clears throat> able to do anything to each other. Now they were, it was a lot of bitches and fuck you bitch, fuck you ho. It was a lot of those thrown around. Those are their words, not mine. But like I said, there were a lot of fuck you bitches and fuck you ho, fuck you bitch, fuck you ho. I'll snatch your wig off, bitch. I already snatched your wig off once, bitch. I'll snatch it off. I'm like, okay. Why? And I mean, this whole situation is about the makeup artist. Like, are we seriously sitting here arguing about makeup? Why? But eventually, Natalie and Christina were able to let it go and move forward for how long? Don't know. <clears throat> so then the next morning, we see Sarah. Sarah's face her lips are like really really big her lips are big her face looks botched you know when Sarah was on BGC 11 I mean I know her booty wasn't real then but I mean she wasn't she was she was a, a beautiful girl but now she has really messed herself up but the next day Chris you know Sarah and Natalie are talking about what happened with she and Christina and it was at this point when Natalie was telling Sarah that, you know, she and Christina resolved their issues. I'm like, oh, there's a green eyed monster within Sarah. Sarah is jealous and I don't know why. You're jealous about anybody being cool with Natalie? Okay. Don't get it, but okay. <clears throat> so then they're talking about they're going to have a board meeting to, you know, talk about the vision. I'm like, a board meeting to talk about the vision? Mm -hmm. Why didn't y'all have a board meeting before y'all started this show, started filming this show? That's why I say they didn't have, they just literally just said, let's try to, let's just try to pick up the hype of Bad Girls Club. Let's put you guys in the house to get, and see my thing when it comes to baddies, ATL, which the title is stupid in itself. Should have been baddies of ATL, not just baddie, but my thing with them, and even Judy made this point at one point in the episode. Why not do something like Real Housewives of Atlanta? <clears throat> Atlanta. Now I'm not gonna. Now I'm not gonna say at Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm not gonna say that. But do something. Like I don't know what any of these girls are doing in their actual lives. If you guys have businesses that you guys are doing, why don't you guys do something where you can promote your business? The difference between now and when you guys were on Bad Girls Club, the big difference then was Bad Girls Club and Oxygen. Were you, you know, Bina Murray, Oxygen, all of them, they were using you ladies. They were, you know, they were taking you away from things that you're, you know, your comfort zone. Like they were taking you from your friends, your family, taking your phone away from you, limited access to the internet. 
one or two phones in the house no tv no communication with the outside world really the only thing that they were doing to you guys is supplying you guys with alcohol taking you to the clubs and give you more alcohol having you got ladies come home and fight each other that's all the bad girls club and oxygen you know that's all they were doing then they were using you ladies but now that you guys are well in your 30s why aren't you guys since you guys went to zeus and actually i have to say it i feel like zeus is using y'all too since y'all went to zeus for this situ this show why do y'all do something where it is showcasing your businesses, your brands, whatever you guys, have, whatever you have? Why don't you go there and say, hey, yeah, let's 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 do this. Let us, you know, do something that's still living, you know, still we still use something bad girls club esque. But at the same time, let us promote our businesses, our, our brands, whatever we're doing. Let us promote ourselves so that way we literally get something out of this where we don't look stupid just arguing over the dumbest shit. That's just my personal opinion. Just me. You know, that's what I would think. But let's move. All right, you guys. Next, let's discuss Sydney. So, Sydney, I'm just going to keep it real with you guys. Sydney is hella annoying. Sydney is annoying. Sydney is thirsty. Sydney is attention seeking. Sydney is just a whole lot. So Sydney went into Seven's bathroom and they're having a conversation. I don't know why Sydney feels the need to always constantly mention Judy. I get it. Judy. And honestly, when it comes to Sydney, I don't understand Sydney because here's my thing. Yes, you said Judy kept you off of, you know, Bad Girls Club Mexico. I get that but you went on to be on one of the highest one of the highest rated shows on vh1 love and hip-hop you're on love and hip-hop new york and even on love and hip-hop new york you did not make yourself very likable you know for sydney i'm wondering because i look at Sydney, i'm thinking about it now and i'm looking at sydney i'm thinking about sydney when she was on love and hip-hop new york i think sydney is insecure in herself as a person you know, she always talks about she's a trans transgender diva. I think that's a persona that she does so that way she feels good about herself. Because I just really think Sydney lacks, I really feel Sydney lacks self-esteem. I'm just going to be real. I think that she lacks a little bit of self-esteem. And I think that's why she does the things that she does, the theatrics, you know, the histrionics, all that stuff. I think that's why she does what she does. Um, but yeah, she ends... Um, and like I said, she and uh, Seven were talking. I, I, I gotta remember her name. Now see, when it comes to Seven, like I said in the first review, I don't know anything about Seven. I don't know anything about her or her season. So this is my first time being, you know, introduced to Seven. This is my first time actually watching Seven. But from what I see, she's a chill, laid back, she's a chill, laid back type person. And I, I fucks with that. So then they discussed the board meeting. Now, I will say one thing that, you know, I'll give Sydney this. The sex toy thing, that was a good thing. That was a good thing to mention. But when it comes, like I said, when it comes to this show, I just, I, I, I honestly feel that before they even start filming, they should have ironed out everything with this show because, like I said, hell, for the last four episodes, y'all been arguing about the dumbest shit. Y'all have been arguing about nothing. But whatever. I mean, I'm here for the, I'm still reviewing it. It, it. It's not bothering me. It's just interesting to say the least. So then um, we see the girls, they're going toward, you know, the board, the board meeting. I'm like, oh, y'all couldn't come up with nothing better than this setup. You know what, budget. Now here's my thing with Judy. Judy's talking about the girls with the OnlyFans. I'm like, wait a minute, that's still a business and a hustle. What are you judging about? And then I'm like, wait a minute, Judy. Even on the first episode when y'all did the photo shoot, you was down on the ground and your dress was lifting up and people could see your panties. And then let's let's go back to you on Bad Girls Club New Orleans. You had sex with a random guy that you did not know and you showed your vagina a lot. So, yeah, Judy, miss me with the bullshit, but okay. So Natalie and Tanisha are given their ideas. So Natalie says that they she wants to do a boot camp where they all get, you know, get in shape, whatever. Oh, 
And then she also mentions for them to get a therapist. Y'all all need a therapist. I mean, isn't that what Laura the Life... <laughs> Laura the Life Coach. Wasn't that what she was supposed to be for when y'all was on Bad Girls Club? When did Laura the Life... Laura the Life Coach. Now, you guys have to remember, I stopped watching Bad Girls Club season 12. But I do know that for season 12 and season 13, that Laura the Life Coach was there. Now, after that, I don't know anything about it. I don't know if she was on for seasons 14 through 17. I don't know. You guys can let me. Actually, I could actually kind of look that up. Let's see if this phone is. Yep, this phone is charged. Because I don't remember. I, like I said, I didn't watch season 14 and I didn't watch 15, 16, or 17. Laura, the life coach. Child, that is, they literally actually have that Laura the Life Coach. Um, well, there's Laura. There's Natalie. So I'm guessing Laura the Life Coach was only on season 12 and 14. Well, no, the last she might have been on 14. Oh, I can't play that. So, yeah, you guys can let me know how many seasons was Laura on. I, like I said, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, they want to do that. Then Sydney and Christina tell their story. Sydney tells her story about, you know, being a trans woman. And Christina, girl, you're still on Percocets. I can't stop lying. You're still on Percocets. You just don't keep it real with you. So then while they do that, they notice that Sarah was crying. And I'm like, what is Sarah crying about? Then when Sarah said what she was crying about, I'm like, oh, you people told you to shut up. I'm like, okay. I mean, I guess you don't want to be silenced. But then the more she kept going, I'm like, oh. Because even when, even when Tanisha and Natalie were pitching their ideas, Sarah was upset because she said that she pitched those same ideas to Natalie. So now Natalie and Tanisha are talking about these ideas as if they're the ones who pitched it. I'm like, oh my God, Sarah, you are going to annoy me. And I used to like, I liked Sarah when she was on season 11. I enjoyed Sarah, but she's annoying the shit out of me. Okay. That's the end of my notes, almost. Okay, so we're gonna pause here. We're just gonna end the episode. All right, you guys, so they eventually ended that damn board meeting now, they did talk about bringing in some more girls, and I know that they're going to bring Megan James in eventually. Don't know when, but, you know, Natalie mentioned Cat from season five, I believe. Is that what season Cat was from? Cat Washington? Cat, Cat was, yeah, Cat was season five Miami, right? So, yeah, Cat was season five Miami, and they mentioned Megan. I'm like, Natalie, now you and Megan have a tumultuous history with each other y'all have had issues since her season of bad girls club you know it's interesting when you think about natalie because natalie always got into it every year with the it girl of whatever season because i remember season six she, season six she had an issue with her and Charlotte went back and forth with each other on season six season seven she went back and forth with stassi and judy Season eight, she had an issue with the twins. And I think she still has an issue with the twins. They made up, but they now have an issue once again. She had an issue with the twins. Season nine, it was Megan. And we remember Megan tried to fight her on Bad Girls All-Star Battle. Season 10, who did she have an issue with season 10? That one I don't remember. I remember in a casting special, she talked about Shannon's titties. Huh, Camila. I don't remember who she had an issue with in season 10. Now, season 11, I do remember who she had the issue with. That one was Jazz Monet when she was talking about her name and her edges. Now, as much as I do not like Natalie, I can't stand Jazz Monet equally. I cannot. But, when, but I will give Natalie one thing. She read the shit out of Jazz Monet. I will give her that. So once the board meeting ended, they went to the club. Then after they left the club... 
See, I, when it comes to Sydney, I feel like Sydney does pick with Judy. I really do. I feel like Sydney picks with Judy. Then they in the in the in the car. She's talking about some fake bitches in here. Then she gets into it with Tanisha. Now, I don't know who that guy was in the front seat because he came at Sydney. He's like, I mean, although you're a transgender woman, Sydney, some people don't look at you that way, and and you you got to remember that that some people don't look at you that way. Some people still see you as your dead gender. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I can't really say I felt any way about that man coming at her. But I mean, I really can't say I felt any way. Yeah, I can't. Nope, I can't really say I felt any, felt any way. He didn't, I, I'm glad he did not disrespect her. But it is what it is, really and truly. But that's the episode, you guys. It, um, I really hope this. I really hope it's only eight episodes of this season. I hope and pray it's eight, and I hope there's no reunion, because I know that on on the chance on chances show. I know that they did a reunion for his show. Now Jocelyn's Cabaret, do they do a reunion for that? Don't know, but that's it. That's the review, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode overall. Um, actually, I might turn the comment section off on this one. I don't know. We'll think about it. I might turn the comment section off. Um, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else, and share this video. Until the next one, stay safe, take care of yourselves, wash your hands, wear your mask or not, whichever one you do, do be safe in doing so, stay blessed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Alright you guys, that's it, I'm off of here, bye.